Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning. Good morning. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship on this seventh, yes, seventh Sunday of Easter. And happy Mother's Day. Today is that special day of the year when we celebrate and give thanks to and give thanks for those who gave us birth. Though we lift up also the memory of those mothers we may have lost and who have gone before us into life eternal. And we lift up the variety of experiences and feelings we may have, each one of us, about mothers and motherhood. May you feel seen and held in love however you experience this day in our cultural calendar. I am Reverend Tom Reed, and I'm the pastor here at Newton Presbyterian Church, and here in this church, we believe that God invites all people into relationship and to fully participate in the life of this congregation, whatever your skin color, whatever your gender identity, whomever you love, you are beloved by God, and God welcomes you into God's house. Maybe church feels like home to you, or maybe you haven't been in a long time, but whatever it is that has brought you here this morning, at this precise moment, we are grateful and you that you are here with us. So welcome home. Uh, for anyone new to Newton Presbyterian Church, we do have pew cards in the back of the pew, these little yellow ones, if you'd like to fill in your information and leave those in the offering plate, someone will be in touch with you. For those joining us online, if you um, would like more information about our congregation, you can go to our website, and in the upper right-hand corner, there's a contact us link, and we'll add you to our weekly mailing list, and someone will be in touch to welcome you this morning, or this, sometime this week, but welcome you today. Um, also, for those joining us online, please take a moment and use um, the chat feature on Facebook. Jonah will make sure to put a, a message of greeting there for you, and you can use that to share where you're joining us from. You can greet one another. You can lift up prayer requests that we will um, we can lift up later in worship. Uh, but it's a wonderful way to be together, even if we are physically separated. Um, be sure to check your bulletin for activities, uh, up, upcoming activities in the life of our church. We will have our fellowship time uh, in the vestry after worship, so come have some delicious treats and coffee or juice, whatever you would like, and we will, we will enjoy time together. Wednesday evenings, we are having our, our evening prayer and simple supper and study. We're doing the Gospel of Mary, the, a book about this um, rediscovered text that was used by early Christians um, and seeing how it can inform our understanding of God's church and God's work in our life. Um, next Saturday, May 18th, we are having a concert here at 6 p.m. Um, Anran and I are going to do a recital. It's my first one in 20 years, so it's a a new, a new, a new old adventure for me. But I'm, uh, we're hoping to launch a fund to support concert and recital series in the future, um, so that we can, as a church, support and offer opportunities for young and emerging artists or new and less performed work as our gift to the Newton community and beyond. So please, please join us. We're looking for volunteers still to help set up beforehand. Um, there's a, we're hoping to have a reception afterwards to build off of the momentum of welcoming um, those who show up. And please encourage friends to come um, so that we can live our faith of loving our neighbor and welcoming strangers into this wonderful space. Um, are there any other announcements? All right, so before Ariana, who is serving as liturgist this morning for the first time, and we are absolutely delighted to welcome her to our liturgy circle after her wonderful reading on Christmas Eve as well. So this is backed by popular demand.
before Ariana leads us in our call to worship, let us pause for a moment to breathe and center ourselves as we gather together as God's people here in this sacred time and space. Let us pay attention to the ruach, the breath or spirit that flows through our bodies, whether or not we are paying attention to it. Close your eyes if you feel comfortable and take a deep breath. Breathe in that breath that first filled our lungs when we emerged from our mother's womb. How do you feel this morning as we come together to worship God? Maybe you're tired or energized. Maybe you're filled with questions or wanting to shout praises. However you are in this moment, take another deep breath and pay attention and let us lift up whatever we may be feeling this morning to God. Take one more deep breath in and exhale. Amen. You may open your eyes if you close them and let us worship God together on this day that the Lord hath made. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Ariana Tabby. Happy Mother's Day. Please join me in the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. We delight in God's word. We meditate on God day and night. Our worship grounds us in God like trees planted by streams of water. Our worship, God helps us yield good fruit. We do not wither when we spend time in God's presence. Let us sing hymn number seven, Muttering God, You Gave Me Birth. As this Easter season comes to a close, we turn again to God to confess our sins, the sins of our community and our society, to prepare ourselves to live into the redemption of Christ's offers. Please join me in the prayer of confession as printed in your bulletin. Savior God, we invite you into our lives for a season only to forget and neglect you once again. You beckon us, calling for our attention, but we are distracted and busy taking care of our other priorities. Remind us, Holy God, that you are the source of our flourishing. You are the living water by which we have been planted. Forgive our neglect. Forgive our unfaithfulness. Focus us on you, your word, 
and all that your spirit provides. Amen. Beloved, Christ forgives, Christ transforms, Christ renews, Christ leads us down the path of new beginnings. We are a new creation, ready to sing God's glory and testify to God's grace. In, in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And now, also with you. Let us share Christ's peace. Now can we please turn to the back and wave to the camera? And can I invite our young people up to the front? Pretty please. And the young at heart are also welcome, yes. Next week, we will be doing our weekly practice of packing lunches um, for the Wild Community Day Center of Waltham. So if you can plan to join us to help make sandwiches or bring in supplies, we always need bread and cold cuts and cheese and things that can go in, and lettuce, I thought you said, oh, snacks. <laughs> um, lettuce is also a part of it, but 
Um, Kathy is faithfully coordinating, so if you would like to bring something and want to help ease her trip to BJ's on Saturday, that would be uh, wonderful so she can know what other people are bringing. So please reach out uh, and come and make sandwiches and lunches as part of our mission in the world. All right, young people. I'm going to scooch in right here next to you. So who has seen a tree? Yep. Anybody else? Alex, have you seen a tree? Yeah. Allison's seen a tree. Madeline? Oh, yeah, in real life. Yeah. A real life tree, yeah. A real life tree? You've seen a real life tree, right? That's what I you just said. Either. There's trees outside. Oh, that's like moving. No, well, that would be pretty cool. A tree with, uh, with eyes. Potatoes have eyes, I hear. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, um, I digress. So, everyone's seen a tree. What does a tree look like? Uh, Bella. Um, it has leaves. It has leaves, yeah. What color are the leaves? Green. Yeah, they, c they can also be other colors, but yeah, they're usually green. And then what, what else? What does a tree, what, 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 looks, what makes a tree? And then Alex, we'll come to you in a second. Like the trunk, the yeah, yeah. It's often brown. Yep. And and it, how does it feel? It and like rough. And then Alex, Alex was gonna share something, and then we'll, we'll come back to you, Bella. Yeah, Alex. It has a trunk. Yeah. Anything else? In the brown. Yeah. Say that again. And the and the green leaves, yeah, good job. And then Bella, what's one more? One more. This is our last one on trees. Um, trees made by the wood. Trees, yeah, that we they're made of wood, and we can sometimes use that wood to do other things. Like, it's windy. and it's windy. What do trees do when it's windy? They wave around. They wave around, right? Trees br branches wave. <laughs> is that right? The branches on the trees hold up the leaves. Yes, evidently trees are a very good subject. I should do more children's messages on tre trees. <laughs> apple trees, yeah. What grows on apple trees? Seeds. Apples. Who likes apples here? All right, apples are also popular, which is an excellent segue to why I'm talking about trees. In our today's psalm is psalm number one, which Ari's going to read very shortly. Um, but one of the, what's that? That's a piece of paper made of, what is paper made of? It made of, it comes from trees. Yeah, so we're still on, on brand. Uh, so verse three of Psalm one today, which is the very first Psalm in the book of Psalms, and I may have turned the the Bible there to Psalm 1. Uh, <clears throat> but verse 3 says, They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. And, and the first, well, this, the Psalm, <laughs> did you want to talk about trees too? Um, so the psalm is talking about folks that, that love God, that follow God's teaching, and they're like trees planted by water when we are following what God teaches us and when we love God. So sometimes we, we benefit from God's instruction and God's reminding us of how we how we are to live, how we are to treat one another. Is that, and so when next time you think of a tree, you see a tree, I want you to think about Psalm 1 and remember that God says that those who, who follow God's teaching and who love God are like trees planted like water. Yes? In your backyard, you have lots of, well, you have lots of opportunities to think about Psalm 1 then. 200 trees, wow. Or 50, okay, right. Yeah. 
Bella, what, one last last comment. <laughs> and then we're going to say a prayer. All right, we're going we're gonna to agree to disagree on how many trees there are in the backyard. <clears throat> so, will you, will you pray with me? All right. Dear God, Dear God we thank you for trees, we thank you for trees and fruit like apples, and, fruit like apples and, for and for your teaching to us. May we hear your word, May we hear your word and do our best to follow, you to follow you and love our neighbor. Love our neighbor. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for coming up. As we continue our worship and prepare to hear God's word read to us this morning, please, join, please continue with me in a spirit of prayer. Open us, Holy One, to your word and your way. Clear our minds of all the daily distractions and fill our hearts with the humility we need to hear and receive the message you intend for us today. Amen. Our first reading for today is chosen from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1, verses 15 through 17, and verses 21 through 26. On the Pew Bible, is on page 881. In those days, Peter stood among the believers together. The crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit, through David, foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. 21 to 26. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed to Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry, an apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the Lord fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Please join me in the responses, Sam. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in the deuce due season with leaves that do not wither everything everything they do shall propose it is not so with the wicked they are like chaff which the wind blows away therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes nor the sinner in the cosco of the righteous for the lord comes the way of the righteous but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. Our second reading this morning comes once again from the first letter of John. Chapter, we're still in chapter 5. 
of a pretty short letter, uh, <laughs> um, beginning at the ninth verse. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that God has testified to God's Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made God a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning God's Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in God's Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Our gospel reading continues once again in the, from the gospel according to John, chapter 17, beginning at the sixth verse. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my, they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Here ends our readings for this morning. May God add a blessing to our understanding of these texts, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This week I have found myself drawn toward the first reading for today, which catches the early Jesus follower community in a very difficult moment a moment of transition. The church calendar marked the ascension of the Lord this past Thursday, which comes 40 days after the celebration of the resurrection of the Lord on that first Sunday of Easter. And 
at the time of the ascension, we are at near the end of the season of Easter. At the ascension of the Lord celebration was fixed on this day in the fourth century to align with the chronology described in the opening chapter of Acts of the Apostles. And despite the fact that the gospel according to Luke, um, which scripture tells us is written by the same author, a volume one to the Acts of the Apostles, volume two, both of which are written to the most excellent Theophilus, but despite the fact that the final chapter of the Gospel of Luke starts with the first day of the week, meaning that morning of Easter, and describes the women who came with Jesus from Galilee, describes their coming to the tomb with spices to care for Jesus' body. That's how the, chapter, the final chapter of Luke begins. And then verse 50 of that same chapter happens on the same day, saying Jesus led them out as far as Bethany and blessed them. And as he blessed them, Jesus withdrew from them, was carried up into heaven. And then the disciples joyfully worshiped Jesus and returned to Jerusalem and, quote, were continually in the temple, blessing God. According to Acts of the Apostles, Jesus remained with them in his resurrected form for 40 days, speaking with them about the kingdom of God. At that point, the disciples ask if now is the time when Jesus will restore the kingdom of Israel, the dream of at least some, if not all, of the disciples who expect that being what Jesus came to do, Jesus responds to them, it is not for you to know the times or periods that God has set by God's own authority. Jesus again promises that they will receive the power of the Holy Spirit and they will serve as Christ's witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And at this point, in, um, 40 days into Jesus' renewed teaching, it's at that point, according to Acts, that Jesus is lifted up and taken out of their sight by a cloud. I love this moment when the disciples are standing there with their mouths open, perhaps asking themselves, what just happened? And maybe working hard to avoid the next question, what now? They are, in that moment, greeted by two men in white robes who say to them, People of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Why are you just standing there, they ask. Jesus did what he said he would, and he will come back like he said he will, but don't you all have work to do? Coincidentally, in prepping the sermon and revisiting these passages which are closely linked to today's reading, I was reminded that it was on this Sunday back in May 2020 that I first preached here at Newton Presbyterian Church, although it was from my living room on a recording that was played on YouTube when we were worshiping remotely. But this, that was the text that I focused on for that sermon. It was very interesting to be coming back to that several years later. But this moment is where this moment after Jesus has left and the what now is where we find the disciples at the beginning of today's reading. They return to Jerusalem from Mount Olivet and they head back to the upper room where they had been staying and there they devoted themselves to prayer. It seems like they are very much in a moment of now and not yet. Jesus has left them and the Spirit has yet to arrive. Wait till next week. And I imagine they were trying hard to figure out what to do next. The constant work of the church. And the work that continues to be ours in our time. The text describes a pretty substantial group, in my opinion, 120 persons who were gathered together and serves as an excellent reminder or expansion of our understanding of Jesus and those first disciples. It was not just Jesus and the 12 
there were many others, including women, who on this Mother's Day deserve more attention and credit than they are given. As a first step in navigating the post-Messiah work of the church, Peter lifts up the immediate functional challenge that Jesus had called 12 disciples to follow him, a biblically significant number representing the fullness of the people of God and hearkening back to the 12 uh, sons of Jacob or Israel who gave rise to the 12 tribes that would descend from them. Tribes that had long ago splintered into two kingdoms, northern and southern, Israel and Judah, with some tribes fading away along the way and all of them eventually being conquered and disrupted, many being taken into exile, some being left behind in the Holy Land, and all eventually being restored to the land in the 6th century BCE, where they would try to rebuild and recover from such devastation, living with the scars and the impacts of such tremendous pain and loss. Peter reminds the crowd that there had been 12, yet one had been lost. Judas, Peter states, became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He, meaning Judas, was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. It is good to remember that Judas was one of Jesus' chosen. Judas was called. He had a share in the community and a share in the ministry. Jesus called them all to work toward. The Gospels have different takes on what Judas did and why, of course, and that is understandable because it is incredibly hard to accept and understand what Judas did. But Jesus knew it. Jesus accepted it. Jesus accepted Judas. And Jesus loved Judas. We shouldn't forget that. And I have spoken about this on Monday, Thursdays in the past, but I have come to understand that Judas' betrayal of Jesus is not the actual alerting of the authorities and the leading of them to Jesus, which then enabled them to jail and execute Jesus. The true betrayal of Judas is his walking away from the relationship. Judas did what he had to do, and this, according to Peter, was in fulfillment of the Scriptures. It was something that had to occur. But in the process, Judas cut himself off from Jesus, the true vine, as we have talked about in previous weeks. Judas lost himself in his own mission, in his own vision for the world and for the Messiah. And that, that loss of relationship, of connection, of love, was what constituted his betrayal. The rest of the reading from Acts shifts to the mundane, ordinary tasks of living in Christian community and offers a model for us that we Presbyterians should be attuned to. Peter argues that they need someone to fill the spot that Judas has left vacant. In trying to figure out how to go about that, Peter suggests that it should be someone who had known Jesus and who had been with them from the moment Jesus was baptized until ascending into heaven, as we state in our creeds and confessions. This again reaffirms the idea that there were more than just the twelve along the way going back to the first moments when Jesus emerged and was baptized and then driven into the wilderness. Note that Peter does not try to use his status among the disciples as justification for him to simply pick the person to take Judas's place, nor does the leadership that follows Jesus depend on dynastic succession. No one individual presumes to take Jesus's place and assume sole authority. The group gathered there, potentially all 120 people, put forth candidates, and they agree upon two whom they will prayerfully consider. This 
if you're paying attention, very much informs who we are as Presbyterians and how we go about what we do in our church. We mutually discern what God is calling us to do to the best of our ability and with God's help. We have a nominating process where a small group of duly authorized people think and talk and pray about who could serve in the leadership of our church. There are conversations with individuals identified in order to prayerfully explore if they feel a call to serve and are willing to do so. Then those candidates are presented to the congregation who then have an opportunity to prayerfully consider that collective call to leadership and affirm such a call or disagree with a vote. This is the model we inherit from our forebears. And it is an important part of who we are and how we work together as a community. Perhaps unglamorous, but it is important. And it is good to be reminded that our church order is grounded in Scripture. In our selective memory, if you will, the Christian life is filled with ordinary, mundane things. It takes many hands and a lot of work to make church possible and to make it happen day in and day out. Church involves the commitment and involvement of everyone. Being a Christian is more than simply showing up on a Sunday for an hour, although that is a very important part of what it means to be a Christian, but it is not the only part. It is good to remember that we have processes for going about the business of the church, and there are reasons why we have these processes. Reasons that have evolved over time with their roots in Scripture, stretching back to the earliest Christians and far back into the history of God's people. It is also good to remember that the existence of our church depends on ordinary, everyday things. God works in all kinds of ways, beloved. We will remember one miraculous and extraordinary way God works next Sunday when we recall the day of Pentecost. But God is also active in how we treat one another, how we work together, and how we agree to serve one another. That is sacred, holy work. May that memory stay with us and animate our faith and our work, being the hands and feet of Christ our Savior, who entrusted his vision to us and the mission of his church when he ascended into heaven two millennia ago. May we remember that God's call to us as the church always requires an answer from us. May we hear that call and may we be willing to say, Hineni, here I am, send me here in our own time. Amen. As we continue our response to God's word read and proclaimed, let us join in singing our sermonic hymn number 313, Come Down, O Love Divine. Please rise on your feet or in your hearts.
As we continue our response to God's word, each week we have an opportunity to say what we believe, to to respond to God's word. These often come from our church's creeds and confessions. Today, in responding to the word in honor of Mother's Day, we have a litany for Mother's Day. So please join me in today's litany as printed in your bulletin. Like a mother hen brooding over her young, like a mama bear protecting her cubs, or an eagle stirring up the nest to teach young to fly, God is mother of us all and gives us earthly mothers to bear, nurture, teach, and protect. So to all who are mothers in flesh and spirit, we honor you. With those who are pregnant, however anticipated, expected, or surprising, we support the flourishing of new life. With those who gave birth this year, we celebrate with you. With those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains and spit up, we appreciate you. With those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. With those who experienced loss this year through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or children leaving home, we ache with you. With those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, disappointment, and tears, we walk with you. With those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we thank you. With those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we rejoice with you. With those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. With those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. With those who experienced abuse at hands of your own mother, we minister to your pain. With those who miss your mothers, we sympathize with you. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. This Mother's Day, we salute you. Forgive us, Holy One, when we fail to support you or say foolish things. We don't mean to make your job harder than it is. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and your love has revealed God's love for us in the spirit of Jesus Christ. For this, we are eternally grateful. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Beloved, God invites us to give the testimony of our hearts in practical offerings of money and time. Each week, we have an opportunity to reflect on God's movement in our lives and how God calls us to respond. We do this with the offering plate, with QR codes, and with helping hands and discerning our gifts and being willing to share those. So let us testify to God's love this morning by bringing our gifts.
O God, maker and provider, you have blessed us with many gifts. Use us and what we have gathered to feed the world through your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, it's time that we do an essential act of our church full of ordinary people, which is lift up our prayers, our concerns, celebrations to God. Um, it's wonderful to be back this week to be doing the prayers, and I thank you for your grace in giving me a lovely week off after the end of the semester, and thank you for your prayers. Um, do we have anniversaries, birthdays? Okay. So for Jack and Sherry's anniversary this week, and of course we are continually thinking about them and praying for them as they've welcomed two new baby girls into their lives. Um, and we pray for God's presence in their life. Fifth anniversary. Oh, wonderful. Well, for abiding joy for them for this fifth anniversary. God in your grace. Receive our prayers. Gerald. Thank you. I want to um, ask prayers for Esther. She pulled a muscle on her right hip yesterday, so she can't make it to church. So I guess there's no rice today. So prayers for her, please. Prayers for our dearest Esther, who sounds like has an injury that will hopefully recover soon, and hopefully we will all recover without the wonderful nourishment of the weekly rice. But for speedy recovery for Esther, God, in your grace, receive our prayers. I see some prayers from the playground over here. I have a dance competition this weekend. Prayers for Ari's dance competition. May the Lord be with you. And can we lift up a prayer of celebration for Ari's wonderful reading this morning? Let's give her a round of applause. I think. So for provision over your dance competition this weekend, God, in your grace, receive our prayer. I practice my dance. my house. <laughs> Bella has also been practicing her dance, and so we need to have prayers over both of our Tavi kids, our excellent dancers. We thank God for all the talents that everyone brings to this congregation, including all the arts and the various forms of expression. God, in your grace, receive our prayers. My knee has been bothering me again. <laughs> um, I was experiencing some improvement, but it is just very frustrating to not be as usual. It seems the body of Christ is experiencing some aches and pains today <laughs> from a couple folks. So we ask for steady recovering and healing for everyone, aches and pains, um, and that we will be restored to whatever wholeness looks like for us. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. Vanderlei. I want to pray for South Brazil. It's a state uh, Rio Grande do Sul, they suffer with the flu fluid or water. It's been a week and a half now. A lot of cities are still under the water. There's uh, 143 people dead till now. We don't know how many people uh, has been cared for the water, the river. And animals, it's a destroy. It's like 417 uh, cities under the water. 
and they have no food, nothing. They lost everything. It's a really sad situation. It's 85% of this state under the water. And yeah, they don't know how we're gonna deal with this because they also provide us rice, corn, milk, and all the other main foods they need, the basic. So pray for them to their families who today they don't have a Mother's Day, I guess. And a lot of people lose not just things, but they lose their families. We pray for those affected by ecological devastation when something this tremendous and overwhelming happens to a community. It's stifling and I think it makes a lot of us feel helpless in what to do. So we pray for the families in that region of South Brazil and for those who will be impacted generally from that, from the ripple effects of that and to those who have been impacted directly. Um, as you were speaking, Vanderlei, thinking about our role as the body of Christ and being stewards of the earth. Um, and a lot of times I think some people think of that as dominion and permission to abuse our planet and it results in nothing but catastrophe. And so in praying for your community, I also want to lift up a prayer um, for all of us around the world and how we care for our climate and for our ecological systems in our beautiful world, um, our Mother Earth, if you will, on this Mother's Day. So thank you. And God, in your grace, receive our prayers. I wanted to play, pray for Luis's car situation so um, that that would be <laughs> worked out very soon. For Luis's car troubles that we can all groan in unison at um, for speedy resolution of that issue. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. Okay. Thank you all for being um, so willing to share your prayers. I know I don't see any more hands, but knowing that we always have more prayers on our lips and in our hearts, let us now join in the spirit of prayer. Lord, you have blessed us as a church full of ordinary people with ordinary problems and ordinary concerns sometimes. We praise you for the power that our ordinary community can lift up when we come together in prayer. Just as your disciples did, we want to pray unceasingly to you for all of our concerns, the concerns of our friends and for our broader community. May we be stewards of our community our planet, and our world. God, we lift up the various injuries and small troubles that some of our congregation have felt. We ask for support and empowerment for those who are sharing their talents with the world, with dances, music, next weekend, and otherwise. God, be with us as we move throughout our week and as we deal with the sorrows from catastrophes from around the world that impact us daily as we walk through our ordinary lives. We offer a special prayer this week for all of our mothers, whether it be it physical mothers or spiritual mothers. Um, we thank you for the guidance that's planted within all of our communities and the love that they share and enrich us with. And in the spirit of Mother's Day, we will now join in the prayer that your son taught us, this time the womanist Lord's Prayer. Please join me. Our mother, who is in heaven and within us, we call upon your names. Your wisdom come, your will be done in all the spaces in which you dwell. Give us each day sustenance and perseverance. Remind us of our limits as we give grace to the limits of others. Separate us from the temptation of empire, 
but deliver us into community. For you are the dwelling place within us and the empowerment around us and the celebration among us now and forever. Amen. Now please rise as you are able in joining me in the, our final hymn, number 341, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Beloved, we are an Easter people. Christ is risen. Live into the hope of Christ's resurrection and follow the Spirit to those who most need God's love, mercy, and care. And may the grace, hope, peace, and love of God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer be with you now and always. And let all God's people say together, Amen.